In terms of what I like best about being a permit technician, I would say is making a difference in communities. People may not realize it, but behind every building, whether it's a shopping mall, apartments, dwellings, even kitchen and bathroom remodels, there's a team of professionals involved, which in the thick of things is a permit technician. Welcome and thank you for tuning in. I wanted to create this video to shed some light to a profession that may not get much advertisement. These professionals are a very critical part of every building department. And I consider these professionals the backbone of the department and organization. If you have ever submitted for building permits or contacted a building department, the chances are you have come across a permit technician. In this video, I will illustrate the path to obtaining this rewarding career, how to better your chances, career ladder, including employment and other resources. So stay tuned. It is important to note that permit technician titles differ throughout organizations. Here are some examples of titles which are equivalent to a permit technician. Land use technician, development review technician, and planning technician, to mention a few. First, let us go over the role of a permit technician. A permit technician is an employee of a city, town, county, or state who typically works within the building department. And in general, the permit technician processes building permit applications and issues building permits. This is done through the building department's permit software. And here are some examples of the permit softwares a permit technician can expect to work with Bear in mind that every department's permit software may differ. However, the different permit softwares have similar formats and you will get on-the-job training to learn these computer platforms. Notably, permit technicians set the tone to the customer service experience by being the very first point of contact to customers. And to give you an idea, here are some examples of questions permit technicians encounter. Do I need a permit to build? You can fill in the blanks in this question ranging from do I need a permit to build a storage shed, fences, or kitchen and bathroom remodels. You may view work exempt from building permits which should help answer such questions. Another example question, what is the status of the building plans and permit I recently submitted to your department? The department's permit software tracks permit statuses, so becoming familiar with the permit software will help answer these questions. This is also where you can put communication skills into practice by checking in with your colleagues for project status updates. In addition to the building department, which agencies will need to review my project? The answer to this depends on the project size and type. Here is an example of the submittal of a new dwelling. Normally, a new dwelling project is reviewed by Building, Planning, Engineering, Public Works, Fire Department, and Health Department, whereas a water heater permit submittal or similar works normally only requires a building department review. All building departments have written submittal requirements, so you will have an opportunity to learn these processes. One last example question I will use, and this is asked very commonly, is what are the permit fees for my project? The answer to this depends on the project size and type. Example, the permit fees to a 50,000 square foot structure will differ from a 1,000 square foot structure. This is because, theoretically, it would take more time and resources to process, plan review, and inspect a large structure versus a small structure. Please be aware that every city, county, state has an adopted fee schedule and is normally published online. Also know that some permit fees are fixed while others rely on the size and valuation of the project in order to calculate the required permit fees. Nevertheless, most all building department fees are incorporated in the department's permit software, which makes it easier for the permit tech to calculate fees. Now back to the role of a permit technician. And as I mentioned previously, Permit technicians will assist a variety of customers, ranging from architects, engineers, designers, contractors, and homeowners. 
The assistance provided by permit technicians can vary from explaining the permit process, explaining permit submittal requirements, and inspection procedures. Therefore, exceptional customer service is imperative. With that said, permit technicians are expected and must be open to learning very basic construction terminology, understand basic construction drawings and blueprints, and learn basic building code requirements, since the great majority of the customers will be seeking those services. There is a lot of data entry, email correspondence, and fee calculations done by a permit technician, so computer skills are very essential. The following will further describe how permit technicians can expect to work closely with internal and external departments and agencies. I will start with internal departments within the organization. First and foremost, within the building department, you can expect to work alongside building inspectors for matters related to building inspections, plans examiners for matters related to the submittal of building plans and documents, and code enforcement officers for matters related to violation cases and submittals to abate code cases. Please note that code enforcement teams are often under other departments such as planning department or police departments. However, in those instances, building departments, hence permit technicians, can still expect to work closely with code enforcement since, in order to abate most code cases, will involve the issuance of a permit through the building department. Permit technicians will also work very closely with the planning department, and this includes coordinating permit submittals with planning, and may include responding to basic planning questions. Therefore, understanding the planning department's role in the organization will be necessary. It is very important to note that, out of all internal departments, the planning department is the one department permit technicians will be working together with on a daily basis. Engineering and public works are often one department and permit technicians will be working closely with both, primarily by providing support with encroachment permits, that is any work taking place in the public right-of-way, and building permit submittals. As to working with external agencies, permit technicians can expect to work closely with agencies such as fire departments, since most permit submittals and projects in progress are dependent on fire department's review and inspection approvals. This is more so the case for projects requiring fire suppression and life safety systems. Fire department is the one external agency that permit technicians can expect to collab with on almost a daily basis. And now I will rifle through other agencies permit technicians can expect to collaborate with on some occasions. Environmental Health Department for new and alterations to food service facilities. Environmental Hazmat for projects using and storing hazardous materials. School districts for new and additions to structures for the purpose of school impact fee assessments. Air pollution districts for projects producing air pollutants. And most commonly, for demolition of commercial and residential structures. Utility districts for most all new projects as it relates to utility connection requirements. And police department. Seldom do they get involved in projects. They primarily have input on projects such as new subdivisions, new commercial, hotels, motels, and multifamily projects. Their concerns are mostly related to security and safety. This is merely a snapshot of agencies along with example project referrals. However, these are the most common you will encounter as a permit technician. Now I will illustrate a career ladder seen in many building departments to include basic requirements to those positions. However, please be aware that the following may not be an exact representation of every building department. The size of the department will ultimately determine the number of permit technicians, leadership, and basic requirements. I will simply present the most common format in an organization starting with permit technician. This position normally requires, at a minimum, an individual to have customer service skills, communication skills, math and computer skills. Permit technicians must have the ability to diffuse difficult situations 
establish great working relationships with all customers and deal positively with customers' intense and sometimes hostile situations. Other desired and helpful skills include some basic knowledge of construction drawings, basic construction terminology, and basic understanding of building codes and ordinances. However, you will learn these desired skill sets on the job. Many organizations do not require certification as a permit technician at this level. However, your chances increase at being considered or hired if you have the permit technician certification, which is offered by the International Code Council. I will go over the path to attaining this certification, so stay tuned. Next on the career ladder is the senior or supervising permit technician. Some organizations have one or both, depending on the size of the organization. This position normally requires an individual to have prior leadership experience and working knowledge of the skills and abilities required of a permit technician in either the private or public sector. Additionally, these leadership positions should have working knowledge of evaluating and training assigned personnel, monitor and manage permit submittals, assure accuracy and completeness of submitted documents, assure accuracy and completeness of both data entry and calculated permit fees. In this capacity, having a certification as a permit technician is very often required or desired. And now let us dive into the path to attaining the certification as a permit technician. Becoming certified as a permit technician is not only a significant achievement, but it also shows clear commitment to the profession. And as mentioned previously, having this certification will drastically improve your chances being hired or promoted. And most importantly, this certification is recognized throughout the US of A. To attain the certification, you may self-study for the exam. The exam materials and study guides can be purchased through the International Code Council. The link on the description box will take you directly to this page, which you will be able to access information related to the exam, exam content, and reference materials needed for the exam. Or you can also view my video titled Accessing Building Codes Online, which will show you where you can access these codes free of cost as well as purchase these materials. Let us now review training and networking opportunities that can better your chances at achieving the rewarding job. Request a meeting with your local permit technicians to discuss career opportunities. This is a great way to network with your local building departments. Attend your local International Code Council permit technician chapter meetings. These meetings are generally open to anyone and there are a variety of topics discussed at these meetings. This is also a great way to meet your local and regional permit technicians and industry professionals. The link on the description box will give you access to this interactive map where you can find ICC chapters by state. In this example, I will click on Colorado, and as you can see, the state of Colorado has a permit technicians chapter, which includes the meeting venue. If you're in California, you can access the California Building Officials website. And on this website, you can find a variety of training opportunities that are not limited to building inspectors and code officials. Training opportunities also includes permit technician specific training. Here's a view of the training calendar. And on the training calendar, you can click on any of the training shown to get an expanded description of the training information. Local utility companies also sponsor training that is free of cost. Not many people are aware of these opportunities, so take advantage of them. And as you will notice, there is a variety of training offered. As a permit technician, you want to be on the lookout for energy code training opportunities. Such training may appear geared for industry professionals and building inspectors. However, the training will enable a permit technician to make sense of the terminology used in a building department as well as help understand building plan reviews and building inspections. I highly encourage permit technicians to take advantage of such training opportunities. After all, the more you know, the better your chances at promotion opportunities within the organization, and it will allow you to better assist the public. 
Here's another California-based utility company located in Southern California, which also sponsors free training opportunities. Simpson Strong Tie, in addition to manufacturing structural products, also sponsors training that is free of cost. The training offered is related to structural code requirements, and the training is available throughout the United States. Here you can find a workshop near you, or you can also access archive webinars that you can view at your leisure. This next agency offers training at a reasonable cost throughout the United States. Training that is essential to the knowledge, skills, and abilities that are required of a permit technician. Such training can also galvanize skill sets you may already have. The link on the description box will take you directly to this page, and as you will notice, there is a wide variety of training that is offered by this agency. Some examples are training related to Microsoft programs, business writing skills, leadership training, and presentation skills training. Such training is offered online or in a classroom setting. Once you have achieved your certification or training, it is time to look for that job opportunity. On this next segment, I will go over job search resources, starting with the International Code Council. The link I provide will direct you to this search engine, which contains building code profession jobs throughout the United States in both the public and private sectors. Specifically, let us search for permit technician jobs. If you're in California, CalOps is another search engine where you can view job opportunities in local governments. The link I provide will allow you to search jobs by region, job category, and job types. Another website you can find employment opportunities is Government Jobs and Indeed. There may be other local or state job websites you may know of. Please feel free to share those on the comment section. It may very well help somebody out. Well, folks, it has been my pleasure to have created this video to help those of you interested in a career as a permit technician. I want to close out by providing my personal advice. First, make great strides to learn and understand the role of all internal and external departments you will collaborate with. Put emphasis on learning what the building inspector's role is, the plan reviewers, and the building official's role. Learn the department's established submittal requirements and seek to understand the big picture in the development process. In other words, learn the overall role of the planning department as it relates to projects, engineering public works and their role in projects, and external agencies mentioned on this video. Be open to cross-train within the department. This will allow you to broaden your horizons, but it may spark your interest in other careers within the department. And finally, it is very important to have a desire to assist the customers you will serve. I always emphasize to new permit technicians the philosophy of treating others as you would want someone in your profession to treat your loved ones. Remember that these regulations and processes can be very confusing to the layperson, as it is confusing to a new permit technician. Lastly, and perhaps some words of encouragement, I have the great pleasure to know several friends and colleagues who started in the profession as permit technicians and ultimately promoted to other professions within the building department. Some of them went on to become building inspectors, code enforcement officers, and plan reviewers. It is also not unusual to see permit technicians rise through the ranks and become deputy building officials or building officials. Well, this concludes this video. Please like and subscribe if you found this information helpful. Thank you and keep your eyes on the price, everyone. Take care.